Check out these new shocks from Next Racing. We've got brand new oil filled shocks for the SCX24 and the AX24. We've also got two different styles to choose from. We've got your traditional oil filled coilovers here and we've also got the coilovers with the functioning reservoir on the side. This is very cool. It's going to give us an extra layer of tuning and adjustment with these things. So I'm really excited to check these things out. They look and feel fantastic. So let's open these up and take a closer look and then we'll get them on the builds and run them to see how they do. Let's get into these. Let's start with the SCX24 shocks. So I love that you get two different options here. If you want to run just the traditional coilovers here, the oil filled coilovers, you can. If you want to pony up and spend the money to get the ones with the functioning reservoir, you can. So you're about $27 for the non-reservoir shocks and it's around $50 for the reservoir shocks. So very similar to stock length, this is a 36 millimeter eye to eye. Pressed length is 26.5 millimeters. Next Racing says that this has more travel than the stock shocks but also collapses to a shorter length. So let's take a look. I have a stock shock right here. So if we were to look at the two, it is longer. I feel like the compressed length is still a couple millimeters longer than the stock shock. Very, very close and a nice feeling shock. Fairly certain these come oil filled. Let's see if I can find out without making a mess here. Yes, indeed, they are filled from the factory. I'd probably just jack this one all up, get a bunch of air in there. But. So you do get the preload adjustment on here, just like your traditional double barrels and your adjustable shocks. You get some adjustment there. The spring feels okay, still a little stiff for the SCX24. I might try these without the spring, but we'll run them as is just for now. Let's check out the reservoir shocks. So these are the same length. The shock body is the same as the non-reservoir shocks. I can feel the extra damping in here already. So this comes with the small Allen key to do your adjustments. So you're able to bleed these. We've got the bleeder screw right here. So you can, when you change your oil, you adjust your oil, you can make sure you get all of your air out here by using your bleeder screw right here on the side. But then the coolest thing is down here on the bottom of this reservoir, we can adjust this you know, by turning it in or out and get more or less damping out of the shock. Let's see if we can get sort of difference here. Turning it just all the way in for the heck of it here. That's pretty stiff. I mean, that's certainly a noticeable difference there. Let's back it out again. I don't want to go too far. Yeah, so that's noticeable for sure. I have the still running the next racing long travel shocks, the 18 scale shocks on the TRX 4M monster truck build. And I didn't feel like I noticed as much of a difference with these larger shocks as I did with the smaller ones, ironically. So we're going to put those on my scale build here. So this is running the ProLine mini big bore scaler shocks on it. So I'm anxious to take the ProLines off and give these next racing shocks a try because they look and feel very similar to the ProLines. So I think this is going to be a good comparison. Plus, I think I'm going to get some extra travel out of it with these longer next racing shocks. Now let's get into the AX24 shocks here. Now the AX24 shocks, although longer and more hardware here, they are the same price. So again, you're around 27, 28 bucks for the non-reservoir shocks and around 50 for the reservoir shocks. These are much longer, similar to the stock length on the AX24. These are 52 millimeter eye to eye. They're 36 and a half millimeter compressed length. I believe the stock shocks on the AX24 are 51 millimeters. So again, very slight gain in overall travel, but you're just going to gain a lot in the way of functionality with the preload adjustment. Big Brothers here with the reservoir shocks. Same design as the SCX24 shocks. We have this piggyback reservoir here with our bleeder screw on the side. Damping adjustment here on the bottom of the reservoir. Again, these feel really nice. They're adjusted out pretty soft from the factory. I don't know how much softer I can go, but even this feels a little stiff. 
These feel stiffer than the SCX24. What's exciting about the AX24 is that if you wanted a long travel oil shock for your SCX24, you could grab these, which is exactly what I'm going to do on some other builds. We're going to demo them on the AX24, but I got a feeling I can find a nice home for these on some built SCX24, so I'm pretty pumped for this. So let's put these on a build. I'm going to start with the SCX24 first. I'm going to put them on my Scale Gladiator. Then we'll do the AX24, and then we'll hit the course with them to see how they perform. So I'm going to get to wrenching, and I'll circle back with you when they're installed. So I'm working my way through the install on the Gladiator build here. Just wanted to show you a quick comparison of the Next Racing versus the Proline scalar shocks. So the Proline's much less damping on here. They are much softer, springier. Now you could adjust that with different weight oil, more or less oil. So I could stiffen these up if I want, but I like the performance of these shocks. I just wish they were longer. So the next racing shocks are significantly longer. I'd say four to six millimeters at least. A gain in travel with the next racing shocks. The bore obviously is not the same diameter as the Pro Lines, hence the big bore scalar name. Let's take a look at these real quick before we hit the course. So let's start with the SCX24. So I'm pretty happy with how these fit on the SCX24. I love them on my scale build. They lifted the chassis up, which is okay because it makes it look more scale. I feel it gives me more clearance for these 58 millimeter DJ crawler tires. So overall, I'm really happy with them. They've got a great look to them. They've got that piggyback reservoir on it with the black anodized aluminum. It's got a great scale look, and I love that they're not too long. Just really, really fit this build a lot, I think. And I'm happy with them on this truck for sure. I am running flex extensions on this. So a couple of notes on the installation here. I'm running flex extensions on these front and rear, and I'm also running the Grizzly Works chassis setup. So it's not a factory setup here couple of installation notes if you were putting this on a factory chassis next racing doesn't supply any hardware so you will have to supply your own hardware one thing i would be cognizant of with the stock setup you might need some shock spacers to kind of bump out these reservoirs from the chassis now because i have flex extensions they come with these little shock spacers here without that i think you might run into some binding issues with that reservoir and the shock body hitting the frame, maybe not, just throwing that out there. If you do run into binding issues running these on a stock chassis, that could be your root cause. So think about that when you're doing your install. But overall, they feel really, really good on here. I'm excited to try this out. The action on them feels very smooth. They don't have a ton of rebound, which is okay, but they feel like they've got nice damping. So they got a good amount of articulation there. Not outrageous though, so this is gonna be cool. So far, I dig them. Perfect on the scale build, I think, the SCX24. Now let's take a look at the AX24. So the AX24, this is a fully built next racing rig here. So this is your next racing wheels, chassis kit. The whole getup is next racing here. Now we got the shocks on here. So one thing I noticed with this is that it lifts the chassis up quite a bit, and these feel a lot stiffer than the SCX24s. Still have nice, smooth action on them. I just wonder what this is going to do to our performance because of the, the height that we've got out of this thing. One thing you notice too is that in a lot of my B-roll shots here, I had the shocks mounted on the inside of the chassis, which is where I had my stock shocks. And I did that because when you're at full articulation, the tires rub on the shocks when they're mounted to the outside of the chassis. You see that pretty severely there. But when I had these mounted on the inside, they were binding up significantly so i had to relocate them to the outside in the front so we might just get some rubbing on those shocks there in the back i still have them inside the chassis here and they're working fine in the back look great on here again i love the looks of these things very very cool so why don't we get these out on the course and we'll see these shocks in action starting off with the scale gladiator build let's hit the course here The action looks super smooth on these.
not noticing a lot of bounce nor a lot of body roll. Nice. This thing's very lightly modified, but it does really good. Front end sitting a little high there. So they feel a little bit stiff, I think, but still I'm very happy with them so far. Ah, I should have committed there. I think the extra travel and the height really helps this truck with the tires. Oh, cliff hanging. I think I'm going to save it. Wow. Nice run by the scale build. Just for the heck of it, just come across and do some side hilling here. Oh, it's good. Hang on. <laughs> oh, wow. This thing's impressive. I want to try going up the chute, see if I get any torque twist or chassis twist going up here. It's slightly off camera, but I'm not seeing any. <laughs> I think this little gladiator you're gonna do it. Oh yes, <laughs> I love this thing. So impressed. So I'm really happy with these shocks on the SCX24 so far. I mean, let me know in the comments if I missed anything, but I didn't see any torque twist or body roll going up those inclines it seems to be really well composed and sorted out action is smooth it's got good ride height good scale appearance I think these are a win for the SCX 24 Now the Angry Bird, the pterodactyl, the alien pterodactyl build. Look at this thing. This was going to be interesting because of the ride height. You know, it was pretty tall to begin with, just with how this chassis is made. But now it's going to be even taller with these shocks. I think might need to take the springs out possibly to get this ride height down a little bit but we'll see how it does this thing's mostly for fun anyway this is my son's build and he loves it
shocks do look great on there I gotta say I love those long travel piggyback shocks It's kind of already doing better than I expected. I <laughs> do a wall ride right there. Ah! We held it on there. See if we can get down this decline here. Oh, yeah, there's that chassis height. I feel like that's what you're always combating with the AX24 is the height versus the stubby wheelbase. The way it carries its weight is just not ideal for crawling. Oh, It's gonna surprise me here though. Up the escalator. I know the side hill is gonna be virtually non-existent, but let's see how this thing looks going up the chute here. Again, I don't see a lot of torque twist, which the AX24 is really prone to torque twist in stock form, but I feel like these are stiff enough that I didn't get any there. Hell's Gate's probably gonna be a long shot with this thing, but let's give it a shot anyway. See, it's fighting the chassis height already. Oh, what I'm primarily interested in is just how the chassis is behaving with these shocks on there. And again, not getting a ton of twist. It's pretty composed, although you know, whoa, I'm hanging on for dear life here. So I think if anything, these would certainly solve the torque twist and chassis twist out of the stock shocks. Oh, I thought we were going to have it. Oh, so close. The angry pterodactyl almost made it up there, which is pretty impressive considering how tall this thing is with these shocks on there. <laughs> so this thing definitely needs some work chassis wise but I feel like these shocks have a lot of potential and with the right build and some tuning I think these could be awesome as well like I said I'm really looking forward to trying these longer shocks on an SCX24 one of my built rigs that could really benefit from these long oil filled shocks with that adjustability I think there's a lot of potential here for a bunch of different builds Oh, I think my battery died right there. That's all right, close enough to the end. Some great shock options here from Next Racing for the SCX24 and the AX24. Really happy with how these performs, particularly the shorter shocks on the SCX24. Ironically, coming from me, the flex guy here, really, really enjoyed them on this build. I think for a scale build with less travel, these are great shocks. With the AX24, the 52 millimeters, again, if you wanted to put these on an SCX24, it's great that you've got the option to do so, and they work really well on the AX24. I felt like it really eliminated the torque twist and the chassis twist that the AX24 is really prone to get in stock form. So with or without the piggyback reservoir on the AX24 shocks, I think you're going to get some good advantage and some good performance out of these. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the oil-filled shocks from Next Racing? I'll put the link in the description down below if you want to check these things out. They do come in four different colors. I had the black here, but there's also green and red and blue available, I believe. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll see you in the next video.